What is going on guys? It's Medicosis Perfect Sinatus where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's resume our playlist called Microbiology and Infectious Diseases. In previous video we talked about Streptococcus pyogenes. Today I'll introduce you to two new bacteria. We have Streptococcus angiosus versus Streptococcus dysgalactiae. With that said, now let's get started. But before we get started, just remember that angiosis causes abscess not pharyngitis. Dysgalactiae causes pharyngitis, not abscesses. This pharyngitis could be later complicated with post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. Similar to streptococcus pyogenes? That's right. This is my microbiology playlist. Please watch these videos in order. Although streptococci are what? Gram-positive bacteria that happen to be cocci, and catalase negative. Streptococci are arranged in chains. Some of those streptococci are alpha hemolytic, some are beta hemolytic, some are gamma hemolytic. The two bacteria that we're discussing today are beta hemolytic. Do you remember how we classify streptococci? Yeah. Streptococcus angiosus and Streptococcus dysgalactiae are here according to the Lansfield classification. According to their hemolysis, they are beta hemolytic because complete hemolysis on the blood agar. Streptococcus pyogenes, this is pyo, pus. I can have pus in my skin, I can have pus in my throat. And then the complications include rheumatic fever and post streptococcal glomerulonephritis. Streptococcus agalactia, we're talking neonatal sepsis, neonatal meningitis, and neonatal pneumonia. Streptococcus dysgalactiae mostly cause pharyngitis. Can they lead to post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis? Yes, they can. How about the angiosis? Abscess. Streptococcus angiosis. Abscess. Streptococcus agalactiae. Pharyngitis. Let's dig deeper. The angiosis can cause an abscess. Where is the abscess? Anywhere. It could be in the oropharynx. It could be in the peritoneal cavity. It could be in my brain. It could be in my skin. Usually, streptococcus angiosis does not cause pharyngitis. Conversely, streptococcus dysgalactiae can cause pharyngitis, but usually do not cause an abscess. Do we have other differences between the two? Yes. Even though both are beta hemolytic, angiosis will give you a narrow zone of hemolysis, but dysgalactia will give you a wide zone of hemolysis. But why is there medicosis? Because the angiosis grow in small colonies, narrow zone, but the dysgalactia, large colonies, wide zone. Flashback. Let me take you back to the story of Streptococcus pyogenes. The immunological complications include rheumatic fever, heart, or post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, kidney. This is Streptococcus pyogenes. As you see, if I start as pharyngitis, I can go to the heart, rheumatic fever, or kidney, post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. Therefore, you can argue that we have cardiogenic strains and nephrogenic strains. However, 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 if the strep pyogenes started on the skin, a pyoderma, then it can only cause post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis and not rheumatic fever. But if you start at the pharynx, you can go either route. So now we can compare between Streptococcus dysgalactiae and Streptococcus pyogenes. Streptococcus dysgalactiae, large colonies, just like strep pyogenes, similar. Wide zone of hemolysis, just like strep pyogenes, similar. How about causing pharyngitis, just like strep pyogenes, similar. However, Strep dysgalacti cannot cause an abscess. Streptococcus pyogenes do cause abscesses. Not as common as Staph aureus, but they can do it, of course. Next, immunological complications. Streptococcus dysgalactiae can trigger glomerulonephritis, just like Streptococcus pyogenes. However, Streptococcus dysgalactiae can never cause rheumatic fever unlike Streptococcus pyogenes, which can lead to rheumatic fever all the time. Hey, medicosis, why do you call it angiosis? The word angio means vessel. Why do you call it dysgalactia? Dis means difficulty. Galactia from galactose, lactose, milk. Because these organisms were first discovered to cause cow mastitis, the effect the udder of the cow, making the cow less able to produce milk. Pause and review. And pause and review one more time. 
If you like this video, you will enjoy my antibiotics course, which will teach you about antibacterials, antifungals, antivirals, and antiparasitic medications. You can download it today at medicosisperfectionalist.com. And speaking of brain abscesses, I have a course about neuropharmacology course also on my website. It's not going to teach you about brain abscesses, but it will teach you about anti-epileptics, antidepressants, antipsychotics, anti-Parkinsonian medications, opioids, anesthetics, stimulants, sedatives, and hypnotics like benzodiazepines, barbiturates, etc. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here or by clicking that thanks button under this video. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.